Hey guys, this is test 34 game 1. This is the supermarket aisles game. It's an ordering game. We know this because the aisles are numbered consecutively 1 through 9. And they tell us explicitly that there is a before-after relationship. You see it when, towards the end of the very last rule, always higher than K and lower than L. So there is a before-after, earlier-later relationship between the supermarket aisles. Now, I've laid out a bunch here, but I'm going to explain all of that. First, they tell us, you know, we have the nine aisles, one through nine, and only five people. So some of the people are going to have to repeat, and they tell us that each aisle has one clerk, and no clerk does more than two aisles. So for that reason, we know that we're going to have to have multiple repeaters. Everyone except O is going to repeat. We know O is not repeating because the first rule says O goes only once, which means everyone else has to go twice. So for that reason, I've laid out J, K, L, M again, repeating these are our nine variables for the game. They tell us K goes on two, so I put K right there. M does not do one, so I put M with a slash through it under aisle number one. J's are not consecutive, so I put J, J with a slash through it. They're not going to be adjacent to each other. Then they tell us K is the only one between the two M's. So we, that gives us an M, K, M consecutive adjacent relationship there. They tell us exactly one of the L's is an end aisle, so I put L slash on one and then slash L on nine. L will appear on exactly one of those two. Then they finally tell us that O is higher than either K and lower than at least one L. So I've got O right here coming after the MKM box and then lower than L, so that gives us a larger sequence here. Additionally, we know that K on two is occurring prior to this because we could not possibly have MKM occurring before K on 2. Additionally, we know that MKM, the K on 2, will not be part of the MKM box here because M is never on 1. So this is all occurring later than K. So we've got the MKM box wrapped up in a larger sequence. So I actually want to go ahead and make three different diagrams based upon the placement of the MKM box. We could have MKM on 3, 4, 5 or on 4, 5, 6, or on 5, 6, 7. It could not be any later than 5, 6, 7, because we've got to fit O on 8 and then fit L on 9. So this is what I use to create the multiple main diagrams for this game to make the questions a bit easier. So I'm going to lay those out now. So here are the three orderings. We have MKM on 3, 4, 5, on 4, 5, 6, and on 5, 6, 7. And of course, when we have MKM on 5, 6, 7, we have to have O on 8 and L on 9. The others are because of this sequence right here. Now, the others are a bit more open-ended, of course, but we can still do a great deal to lock them down. Now, L is on exactly one of the two endpoints. So when L is on 9 in the top possibility, it cannot be on 1 in that possibility. The two M's, the two K's, and the O have already been used up, leaving j to be the variable on one in this diagram and then we have j and l interchangeable in the remaining slots there we have either j on three l on four or l on three and j on four in that possibility now o has to come later than the mkm box so any empty slot before the mkm block is going to have to be either j or l so we could have you know of course l on one or nine in the middle possibility and then on number one, that could also be J, depending on where L, whether L goes on nine. Then this remaining slot here will have to be either J or L, because there's simply no one else who could potentially do it. Now, same thing here, if you know L or J could be on one, but nobody else could, because O has to come later, then O cannot be on nine, because L has to come after it. So these nine slots will have to be either J or L, there's no one else who could potentially do it. So the only spaces here that are potentially, you know, that could have more than two people are the two slots on seven, eight in the middle possibility, and then six, seven, eight on the bottom possibility. Every single other slot has been reduced to either two or only even one particular variables. So this is right here, our initial setup for the game. Now, question number one, they don't even give us an orientation question. They jump right into a general could be true regarding things touching. So who could ever be consecutive? Of course, J cannot because 
J's never touch at all, ever. We have that rule right over here. K's and M's could not touch because of this MKM box. So B and D are both gone. And then, of course, there's only one O in the game, so O's could never touch, leaving C by elimination. And, of course, we could have our L's touching, you know, on somewhere on 6, 7, 8, perhaps. It's not defined. There's nowhere else it could happen, but maybe it could happen there. So that's our answer by elimination for number one. Next, number two, a pairing of people, neither of whom could be on aisle five. So we see that five will always be either M or K. So any choice mentioning M or K can automatically be eliminated. A, C, and D all mention M, so they're all eliminated off the bat. And then we see, of course, that K is mentioned in B, so that's gone, leaving E by process of elimination for number two. Next, number three, who is a complete and accurate list of people that could be on three? So we see right here in aisle number three, we have J, L, M all mentioned and no one else. So choice B is our answer for number three. Next, number four, they're just asking for a general list of places that M might potentially go at some point, not necessarily within the same scenario. So we see M on three, four, five. We also see M on six and seven. So three to seven is our range of places M could go anywhere within that inclusive. So choice D is our answer for number four. Next, number five, if L is separated by the maximum possible number of aisles. So the top possibility is not going to be relevant here since it has L on nine, but then only L on three. L can't go any earlier than three in that diagram. Whereas in these second and third ones here, we could have L on one and then have L again on eight. So I'm going to lay those out here. When L's on 1 in the middle possibility, we're going to have J on 9 there, leaving L to go on 8. And in the bottom possibility, L on 1, again, J on 9, leaving L to go on 8. So for our bottom possibility here, we have O and J interchangeable on 6 and 7. It could be O on 6, J on 7, or J on 6, O on 7, Either of those works, and in the middle possibility, of course, O will have to go on 7. So these are our possibilities. We just want to run through the choices right now. Of course, also in the middle one there, we had to have J on 3. We couldn't have L on 3 because we already used up the two L's. So running through the choices. Could we have J on 6? Yes, we see it right here in the bottom possibility. So A is our answer for number 5. I will look at the rest, though. M on 7 is impossible. We cross off that top possibility, so that's gone. Both J is lower than O. We, of course, in the middle possibility, we have a J occurring after O on 9. Again, in the bottom, we have J occurring after an O on 9. So C is gone. Looking at D, J only on evens. We have to have J on 9 in either one, so J has to be on at least one odd, maybe two odds if you look at the middle where J is on 9 and 3. So D is gone. And then E, only one person higher than O. We see in both of these we have L and J on 8 and 9. So that's not possible to have only one person higher than O. We have to have at least two higher than it. So E is gone, leaving A if you didn't get it before. Next, number 6, if J is on 3, what can't be true? So J on 3, of course, is never happening in the bottom possibility. In the top one, it's going to be J on 3 and then L on 4. In the middle, J on 3, we lock that down right there. Of course, that means that Things are still somewhat open-ended. We don't know exactly what's happening, but at least we've reduced some of that ambiguity. So they're asking us what can't be true. Could we have J on 9? Yeah, maybe in the middle possibility. It still seems like it could work, so A is gone. Could we have K on 6? Yeah, in the top possibility we have it right there, so B is gone. Could we have L on 4? Yes, we could, right there, so C is gone. D, could we have M on 4? Yeah, we have that in the middle possibility, so E by elimination must be our answer. And if we look at it, O on 6, of course, impossible. That only might have happened in the bottom possibility, but here in the, on the top and middle ones, we have either K or M on 6, not O. So E is our answer for number 6. Finally, number 7, if we had L on both end dials. So automatically, the top possibility is irrelevant because we have to have J on one of the end dials. So we're using this, the middle and bottom ones here. So putting L on the end dials forces, of course, L to be on both 1 and 9, so I'm eliminating the J's from those possibilities. Now, things are still a little bit open-ended, but we can flesh them out as needed. We already have one of the J's maybe going on 3. In fact, it has to now that we've locked down the two L's. So the other J will go on 7 or 8 in the middle possibility, 
interchangeable with O. So I've got J on 7, O on 8, or O on 7, J on 8. Now in the bottom possibility, we have the J's occurring on 6 through 8, but they cannot touch according to this rule right here. So we're going to have J on 6 and on 8, leaving O to be on 7. So here we flushed everything out. Let's run through the choices now. It's a cannot be true question. So four of these could be true. Find the four that could be true, eliminate them, and whatever remains is your answer. So could we have J on three? Yeah, in the middle possibility, we actually have to. So A is gone right there. Could we have O on six? No, O is on either seven or eight in these possibilities. Six has to be M or J. So B is impossible, therefore it's our answer for number seven. I will look at the rest though. O between the only two J's, we have that on the bottom possibility, J, O, J on 6, 7, 8, so C is gone, K only on evens, we could have K on 2 and 4 in the bottom possibility, both of those are evens, so D is gone, and then E, one of L's touching O's, yeah, we do have that, we could have O on 8, L on 9, so they could touch right there in the middle possibility, E is gone, leaving B if you didn't get it before.